In 2005, one of the greatest revolutions in Formula One gaming was announced. Oh no, wait a minute, that was the last video. No, it's okay, it's still F105. Yes, it's okay, you can go outside now, it's safe. Yes, it is. Hello everyone, and welcome back to The Complete Guide. This is part 23, and today I present to you F105. Okay, let's go straight into an instant race. And as you can see, you can fully customize the grid so you can put your car in any position you want to as the lights go out and it's away we go. We are currently at Silverstone and I'm driving as Jensen Button in the BAR. Okay, as the cars go round, it's time to tell you some more about the game. Formula 105 for the PlayStation 2 was released in Europe on July the 1st, 2005 and in Australia later that year. It featured the career mode concept from Formula 104 which allows players to work their way through the Formula 1 teams over the course of 5 years, even though it was just a repeat version of the 2005 season each time. This game also supports iToy Cameo, allowing players to place their own face on a driver when creating their profile, but unlike F104, they cannot choose their own helmet at the start. The player assumes a white, unmarked helmet and only later unlocks other colours and designs. The cover athletes are Jensen Button, David Coulthard and Narayan Carter Kyan. A notable credit is the opening video which features the song Butterflies and Hurricanes from English alternative rock band Muse. For the first time in a number of years, the fans agreed that this was a massive improvement in the series and the shot in the arm it had so desperately needed. A lot of people had criticised Studio Liverpool for the lack of ambition and progress since the series appeared on the PS2 platform up to that point. However, there were criticisms in terms of the AI being too easy on the hardest of settings and about the penalty system that had been introduced on Formula 105 which automatically reduced the revs during a penalty instead of the traditional drive-through penalties the previous games had seen. Ok, let's do this then. Let's first look at the interactive pit stops which is new for F105. You have to come into the pits and you have to press buttons in the correct order. 
to do your pit stop otherwise you get a delay in the pit as you can see the fuel has just gone in now and of course unfortunately for F105 there was no tyre changes because they all went out on the hard tyres so there really wasn't a lot to do on the interactive pit stops only if you had an accident or you had a puncture where they actually had to change the tyres. So we rejoin the field at Silverstone now and we're in third position. Okay, let's move on now to the driving views. As you can see, we're currently in the standard T-CAM view. And now we go to the absolutely glorious cockpit view. As you can see, there are so many buttons and switches and uh, lights flashing on the uh, steering wheel now. It's unbelievable and really, really incredibly detailed and fully immerses you into the Formula One experience. So that has to be applauded there from Studio Liverpool. Now, if we have a look at the mini map, which is now moved into the left hand corner of the screen we can also see for the first time we've now got every single car on there instead of just the one from behind and in front of you wow another massive improvement for studio liverpool and we're just looking at the chase view now as you can see and that's a sort of more zoomed out uh, chase view as well okay and now back to the tcam view okay let's have a look now at online yes this game was online in 2005 but sadly the servers have long been shut down which is such a shame okay then let's have a look now at some of the unlocked cars now of course i haven't played this game a lot recently and the memory cards been wiped so i've only got the lotus 79 and of course the glorious williams fw11 Okay, moving on now to learning and tips. Yes, there are lots of uh, tips that you can uh, go through that teach you about the game. And of course, the new regulations for 2005. We've got braking assistance, steering assistance, the virtual racing line, the corner speed indicator, the suggested gear indicator. It's all there. Anyway, onto the teams. We've got Ferrari. We've got BAR. We've got the Renault F1 team, of course, which were the winners in 2005. We've also got the uh, BMW Williams F1 team, the McLaren Mercedes team, they're all very strong and powerful teams in 05, the Salva Patronus team, of course the Red Bull team which was new for 05, and the Panasonic Toyota Racing team, the Jordan Grand Prix team which of course was their last season, and the Minardi team as well. On to the tracks now, we've got Australia, now I don't think any of these tracks are actually in order, but we've got United States Grand Prix of course, then our next track we move on to is uh, Ca Canada. Then we've got Brazil, then we've got the British Grand Prix, and on to the next one we've got uh, the Spanish Grand Prix of course, and then the French Grand Prix, and then the Belgium Grand Prix at Spa, then of course we've got the Italian Grand Prix, the Monaco Grand Prix, the European Grand Prix which is in Germany, we've also then got the San Marino Grand Prix, uh, the German Grand Prix, and then of course we've got the Hungarian Grand Prix, the Turkish Grand Prix. And then we move on to the Bahrain Grand Prix, and then the Malaysian Grand Prix, and then the Chinese, and then the Japanese Grand Prix. Okay, onto the race options. As you can see, it's fully adjustable. You can go from easy, medium to hard on the difficulty levels. You can also adjust your AI speed, how fast they go, which is uh, separate from your difficulty, which is really, really good. You can also adjust the race distance now from, I think it's three lap. And then you can do 10%, 20%, 50%, 75%, and of course the full race distance which is all very good indeed the fuel and wear you can have scale which means if you pick a shorter race the actual wear on the tires and the car and the fuel of course is actually scaled down so it reflects accurately the race distance that you are currently running on you can of course adjust the weather from its usual cloudy sunny light rain heavy rain whatever or you can also have the fuel and wear i forgot to say on realistic as well if you're doing a full 100 percent race distance Okay, on to more driving aids now. We've got steering assistance, braking assistance, gearbox, manual automatic, suggested gear. It's all there. It's everything that you would expect from a standard Formula One game for the PlayStation format. Okay, let's move on now to a uh, career mode. Yes, on to the career mode. And this time it's fully adjustable, unlike F104. You can adjust the difficulty to how you want it, the race distance, the fuel. It's all there. So we start our career mode. And first of all, we had to find a job. Well, that's really boring. Who wants a job? Anyway, off we go then. As you can see, we get a response from... Oh, it's Deborah. Jo oh, hello, Deborah. Are you going to look after me? Well, that's very kind of you. Uh, so we're going to start a trial, and we've got Minardi, Jordan, or the Red Bull. 
And so we're going to start in the Minardi, of course, because it's bound to be pretty easy. And we've got a time trial that we've got to beat a time in the Minardi. So we cross the line and uh, at the moment, I do believe we haven't quite beaten the time, but a little bit later into the session, as you can see, we're going to cross the line now. And yes, we have successfully beaten the time of 116 or anyone who won 17. So we go to the job offer, but unfortunately, it's only a test driver. But well, we don't really want that, do we? So we're going to go for another trial now. And this is with the Jordan. And we've got to beat this time within 10 laps. So we start our run now. And as you can see, we've just come across the line to finish our 10 laps now. And we've already beaten the time. So we are going to complete our trial in the Jordan. So we're going to go back to the uh, career mode hub and see what we are going to get as an offer. But once again, it's a test driver role. Oh my goodness. Anyway, it's completely up to you if you want to do your first season as a test driver. Well, you can. But eventually you will get into a car and eventually you may even get into a car as good as the McLaren, which is what we are in at the moment. As you can see, I'm about halfway through the season in the McLaren car. So let's go in. As you can see, we've got to choose the session. We've got Friday practice, Saturday qualifying or the race. Of course, we're going to go straight now into the car setup menu. We can go to the quick setup. Once again, if you're not very good at setting up the car, you can just use it as the default settings. The custom settings, as you can see there, will change anything that you need to change on the car. We've also got the brake bias you can adjust. You can adjust the traction control setting as well. So you can have it at 100% or 75 for setting two, so you can individually tailor the traction control to how you actually like it. Okay, so we move on now to the gearbox. Oh, look at that, you can actually adjust the gearbox. I do remember those days. You can also adjust the steering lock, which of course will affect the wear on your tires. Now here's a little bug in the game. As you know, they could only go out on hard tires, which lasted the whole race. But in this game, you can actually change to soft tires if you so wish which of course is a little bit of a bug there because soft tires were not available in the real season okay then now we go straight into a race yes and as you can see this is a 100 race and we are going to stop three times yes finally we have full pit stops in this game so it's time to say go 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 and away we go once more anyway let's have a look at any further improvements we've got now we look over to the uh, right hand corner and we've got a damage indicator for the car as you can see it's very very small but you can just about make it out this tells you the temperature of the tires and whether or not you've got any front wing or rear wing damage it also tells you the temperature of your engine. It gradually gets hotter as you go through the Grand Prix. And if you use a manual gearbox and over rev it too much, you will see that the engine will start to go red, which means it is starting to overheat. It's another fantastic improvement for F105. You can also see in the top right hand corner, we've got the fuel indicator as well, which tells you exactly how much fuel you've got in the race, which was really, really good because in the previous versions, of course, it just started to uh, flash or you used to just get a one symbol that used to come up to tell you that you were low on fuel. As you can see here, you can clearly see exactly how much fuel you've got left in the tank. Okay, so in the uh, left hand corner, you've got, of course, what position you are in the race. And unfortunately, it seems to be only uh, the car in front and the car behind. Once again, as you can see, it's just popped up uh, Weber and uh, I think that's Patrick Friesacker. But uh, whereas it used to in the last game actually tell you several positions, it only tells you the car in front and the car behind. Anyway, it's time for the Monaco test once more. As the five lights go out and it's time to say go, go, go. And away we go, we're back in Jensen Button's BAR. I think this is the default car for this game. Well, of course it would be because it was made in the UK, of course. And so as we climb up the hill, you can see that the graphics once again are glorious. We've got this sort of blur effect, as you can see, as we rapidly gain speed, which actually decreases as we slow down and then increases again. I actually used to turn the blur effect off because I didn't like it very much. It seemed to create an artificial speed environment, which I wasn't too happy about. Anyway, as we go down now into the enormously tight hairpin at the Monaco section into the casino, and is it going to be a clusterfuck? No, it's absolutely glorious as you would expect from a studio Liverpool. Oh my goodness, I think I've just been hit up the Jack Jones by someone there. Oh my god, I've just been hit up the Jack Jones again and we've got a yellow flag for some reason. I think that's David Coulthard. I think it may be Coulthard. Anyway, we go through the tunnel as you can see. It's very, very bloody dark and you can't see a bloody thing. 
Well, anyway, we come out of the tunnel and overall then, it's all good for F105. And look at that, you can also see progressive uh, build up from the tires. And oh my goodness gracious me, we're gonna check out the damage model now. I've plowed straight into a car in front. We're at Indianapolis and I'm trying to see how much damage I can put on the car. And oh my god, I don't believe it. The wing is still on. How the hell can the wing still be on? Let's plow straight into it. Oh, we've got an all warning flag, which means that one of the car's engines has expired. I think that's the Toyota. But I'm still trying to lose this damn wing at the front. I crashed into my teammate there. And we've got two Renaults in front. Let's see if we can get past the two Renaults and smash into this Ferrari. And hopefully, we'll be able to lose the front wing so we can actually test out the damage on this game. So, full speed. Oh, I forgot to brake into the ferrari we go and yes we finally i think we've broken the front wing has it come off no look at that the front wing is still on i don't believe it but it is damaged so anyway we're going to turn the car around very very tight in indianapolis and see how much more damage oh god i've plowed straight into the back or should i say into the front of a jordan and the other jordan is now sitting there we've got a yellow flag situation uh, excuse me sir could you get out of my bloody way look i'm trying to do a race here i don't care i want to do it in reverse i don't want to do it fumbles that's boring come on get oh god and i've been disqualified anyway let's have another attempt now and see if we can get the wheels off on this game so full speed into turn one. Oh shitty bollocks straight into the back of the toyota as you can see but unbelievably the wing is still on at the front. What the hell are these wings made of? Titanium or what? Oh my god, I've plowed into the back of the McLaren. It's unbelievable how much strength these wings have got in F105. Of course, we all know that in real life in the season, they made the cars a hell of a lot stronger. But I don't think they were that much stronger, were they? Oh, look at this. And now we've had a low speed impact and finally the wing has damaged itself. Wow, fantastic from Studio Liverpool there. Let's see if we can uh, forget to brake and plow into this Ferrari once more. And oh yes, yes we do. We push the Ferrari off, but once again the wing is still on. So let's turn the car around again and see if we can do some more damage. Oh my goodness, I've just plowed straight into a Sauber and we've got the two McLarens. And oh my goodness, I've caused a right pile up there. Oh, we've got a yellow flag. Safety car. Anyone got the safety car? Oh no, unfortunately the safety car is not actually in this game. As you can see, I've managed to cause an almighty pile up there and I've been disqualified for cock's sake. Anyway, let's have a final go at trying to get the wheels off this bloody car. I'm going to try and go into the side wall now. Oh my god, no, I haven't done it. Oh, I've gone into the side of Ferrari, but no, still the wheels are on. You can see I've actually damaged the wing. I have managed to get that much done. Oh my god, wait a minute though. The wall at Indianapolis, we can go full speed into the wall. Here we go then. 177 miles an hour and let's go oh bang oh something's come off something's come off as i just hit the renault i don't think that was the wheel though was it the wheel i've got an orange and black symbol which is telling me there's some damage to the car i don't know what it is so as i plow into the wall on the right hand side i'm not quite sure what the damage is to be honest but there you go we carry on going as i plow into the ferrari <laughs> and the i don't believe this bloody car what does it take to get the wheels off this bloody car? Anyway, let's have one final effort then and smack into the wall. Oh my goodness. Oh, wait a minute. I think I've finally done it. I think Horsey's finally gone lame. Yes, he has. Oh my God. Horsey has finally got a puncher, as you can see on the left-hand side. Well, of course, I was going to the wall at nearly 200 miles an hour. So, oh my God. And look at that. A very low impact on the right-hand side. Now I've got a, two punches. Oh my goodness. Well, I have achieved my objective, almost. The wheels haven't come off, but we have two punches now. And this is unbelievable. I absolutely seem to be making quite good progress with two punches as my teammate goes past me. Oh my God. So there you go. That is the damage bottle in this game, which is basically not very good at all, unfortunately. Okay, so just before the summary, I'd just like to uh, do a mention about the AI speed. And yes, unfortunately, this game is very, very easy. It's possible in career mode to win a season in a Minardi, which is a bit disappointing. But there are ways around it as we come in now for our pit stop. And finally, we're going to have to press some more buttons because, of course, we've got to change the tyres this time. So the fuel goes in, the front wing comes in. As you can see, we're going to have to press the buttons at the front. There you go, the R1 and L1 buttons to change the tyres. Now, the way you can get around the actual problems with uh, the AI speed is because this game is basically an update of last year's game, the pit stops take pretty much 10 seconds. Now, of course, um, 
you can come in for a pit stop and press the buttons really, really quickly. You can get out in about five seconds. So the way to get around this and to actually match the uh, pit stops of the AI is to actually wait in the pits, not pressing the buttons for 10 seconds. And then you will pretty much match what the AI are doing. It's not a very good uh, fix around, but it does do the job. So in summary, then we can say, is this game worth buying? Well, I have to say yes, yes, yes. It's a fantastically well-crafted game from Studio Liverpool once more. The handling is absolutely superb. And if you're a Formula One junkie, then this is the place to go on PS2 for your Formula One fix. Because, of course, this was the second to last game for the PlayStation 2. Okay, this has been my review and roundup of F105 for the PlayStation 2. I'd just like to say thanks so much for watching everyone. There will of course be more later.